channels. The Glenn Beck program on October 9th, just a couple of weeks away, uh, we're going to be doing an event on the next chapter of Mercury One and the Nazarene Fund. Uh, it is the Power of One event. Um, can't really be a celebration because of what, everything that's going on, but in some ways it is a celebration of where we've been for the last 10 years. More importantly, what comes next? How are we going to save our country? It is going to be a clear decision. I've been writing um, my, uh, my action plan and my, my uh, speech for that event. I just read some of it to Stu uh, this morning. It is, I think it is going to be something really important for you to know, um, and it is something that I want you to be involved with. Uh, if you can be there, great. You can get tickets. They start at like 25 bucks. All the proceeds go to keep the lights on at Mercury One. This is our once-a-year event. Uh, there's going to be people for you to meet, um, things for you to uh, see, historic items, uh, and uh, some really, really, uh, you're going to walk away feeling really good. It's the M1 Next Chapter event. Just go to m1nextchapter.com, m1nextchapter.com. Doors open at 6 o'clock. The event starts at 7. It is going to be at the uh, Toyota Music uh, Factory uh, here in Dallas, Texas, October 9th. Please come and join us now. Get your tickets now, m1nextchapter.com, and we will, we will see you there. All right. Coming up in just a second, I want to talk to you a little bit about the economy and the lies that we are all accepting. And we have to stop accepting these lies and stand in the truth, because what's coming is going to require the truth, some tough medicine. That's coming up next. Stand by. Thank you. Thank you uh, so much, Hillary. Um, Let me tell you about the zebra. There are nurses all over the country that are losing their job now because they feel they have a right to say, no, it's my body, my decision. These are people that were the the first responders. These are the people that we all cheered on. These are the people that have worked through all of the nightmare of COVID. Now they're going to be fired because they've survived COVID and now they have to get a vaccine. Or how about in Virginia? You've got quite a choice in front of you for governor. Terry McAuliffe said yesterday he doesn't believe that parents have a right to tell the schools what their children should and should not learn. So what do you do? Well, the days of standing there quietly and doing nothing should be over with you. So how do you even begin? We begin in 60 seconds. The Glenn Beck Program. I have a challenge for you. It's going to take a little time, but not much, but a little. And in the end, it will save you a buttload of money. Even better, it will end with you supporting a company that believes in the same values that you do, and that company is fighting for those values. I want you to make the switch to Patriot Mobile. Do it today. Do it now so you don't forget. You'll thank me later. Patriot Mobile is the nation's only Christian conservative mobile phone company. It's on the same cell towers as all the other major carriers, so you get the same great service, although it's half the cost. Half the cost. Patriot Mobile has affordable, customizable plans for any family, and they donate a portion of everything they make to conservative causes. Unlike big mobile companies who are donating to things like Planned Parenthood, they're protecting freedom of speech and freedom of religion. It's PatriotMobile.com slash Beck. Every time you make a phone call, you do good. PatriotMobile.com slash Beck. Call 972-PATRIOT. Get free activation with the offer code Beck. They have special discounts for veterans, first responders, and for multi-line accounts. Support a company that loves America, shares your values, and fights for them. PatriotMobile.com slash Beck. That's PatriotMobile.com slash Beck. Or call 972-PATRIOT. With all the things that are going on, we need to know how to fight. I take you to Clint Eastwood. 
You know, Clint Eastwood, all of Clint Eastwood movies are... I love them because he's usually very, very quiet. He's, he's unassuming. And you just know... I don't know the whole story behind this guy, but he seems like he's going to kill me soon. And you only think that if you're a bad guy. And why is that? You know, I read someplace recently that the people who are going into Afghanistan to save all these people, they're acting like cowboys. Well, the Wild West was wild, very wild. It was unorganized, but it was also full of possibilities. And it attracted only the most ambitious. Those people who wanted to get away from all the rules and regulations that men started imposing on other men, or those who wanted to take advantage of no law. They were independent. Sometimes they were foolhardy Americans. It was everything and nothing all at once in the West. The expansion West was a continuation of Americans' desire for their own space to live, to live as they pleased in accordance with their belief. Wild West, known for some really bad things, but also known for chaotic good deeds. Cowboys like Butch Cassidy, the pioneering spirit of Davy Crockett, a true self-made man who left home with nothing and whose name is still remembered, Davy Crockett, all across the country. Cowboys are remembered simultaneously as lawful and unruly. They had an untamable desire for freedom and living as they thought they ought. Yet, what's truly amazing is real cowboys, among those incredibly independent people. They had an unspoken code that emerged. It was a gentleman's agreement. And they entered into it not by force. No cowboy ever said, you're going to take this code or we're going to kick you out of the cowboy club. They did it by their own consent. They did it in the way they lived their lives. Cowboys relied on unspoken rules. And it was provided just enough structure to the vast openness of the West when everything, when everything was nothing and yet could become anything. The cowboy code created a workable society. And it actually is the same thing that our government relies on. Individuals consenting to live in accordance with a set of principles that they believe will benefit their lives and communities. But what are those principles anymore? Cowboys agreed to no less, but no more. And the rules were enforced by a shared culture that devalued a man if he didn't live up to the code. If he hoped to be a true cowboy, then there were rules. Stories tell us that they had, the rules really had to do with chivalry. Never touching someone's horse was a big one, apparently. You know, but the major rule was let your yes be yes and your no be no. There weren't a lot of attorneys, and when the attorneys did come, the cowboys didn't like them very much. And it's not because they didn't like the legal process and make sure that everybody's taken care of is they had a code themselves. I don't need that piece of paper. I don't need to spend all of that money. When I tell a man I'm going to do it, I do it. When I tell a man I mean it, that's my bond. That's my contract. If I promise to protect you, I will. If he promised to kill you, you better take him seriously. If a cowboy looked you in the eye and told you that he was going to do something, You knew it was going to be done. It was that simple. The most important rule in the cowboy territory was to keep your word. And honesty made an infinite number of possibilities of the West tenable. It balanced the chaos with just enough order. 
Today, that rule seems impossible to keep. Everybody's lying about something. We found out yesterday the president is lying to us. He lied to us when he said, no, the, no, the generals never said that I should keep people there. Wait a minute. Then that makes us question the generals. How could they, how could they have possibly done this? How, what, how were they even educated? How did they come up with this plan to get out of Afghanistan and advise the president that this was tenable? Well, yesterday, all three of the generals testified, no, we told him. No uncertain terms. We told him he had to keep 2,500 troops there on the ground. We had to keep Bagram. Well, so wait a minute. Are the generals telling the truth? Or is the president telling the truth? Well, we found out after that testimony, the White House came out and said, yeah, but it was his decision. Well, yeah, we know it was his decision, but he just lied to us about the advice. Well, that was the best that he could recall. Wait a minute, what are you talking about the best he could recall? Are you, are you saying he's an imbecile? Because I don't know if that's better or worse. See, we can't rely on each other if we don't tell each other the truth. And it's so common now. I mean, everybody is lying, right? We still think it's okay if we personally don't keep our word. But we expect the world to be already prepared in case of our unreliability. So it doesn't really affect anyone, this lie. It's the opposite of the cowboy code. And it's one of the main reasons why everything is spiraling out of control. There is no one that will take responsibility So you have to take responsibility for your own world. What if you could stop the spiral out of control? Even just in your own life by letting your yes be yes and your no be no. Wouldn't it be worth a try? Yesterday, Terry McAuliffe said this in a debate. You believe school systems should tell children what to do. I believe parents should be in charge of their kids' education. Mr. McAuliffe, 30 seconds. So first of all, this shows how clueless Glenn Youngkin is. He doesn't understand what the laws were because he's never been involved here in helping Virginia. But it was not. The parents had to write to veto bills, veto books, Glenn, not to be knowledge about it, also take them off the shelves. And I'm not going to let parents come into schools and actually take books out and make their own decision. You vetoed it. So, yeah, I stopped the bill that I don't think parents should be telling schools what they should teach. Wow. Wow. What rights do they have? What rights do they have? To have their kids learn something that they think is fruitful. Democratize everything. It's a democracy. What that means is that you're empowering the mob. Forget about individual rights. Your kids don't belong to you. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. And that's the first thing that we're starting to see in America. But the rest of those who remain silent need to stand up and say it as well. These are my children. They belong to me, not the community, not to the teacher, not to the teacher's union, and certainly not to the state. My church can make its own decisions. I don't care. Let the rest of society be damned. You don't want your church to make that same decision? Then don't have your church make that decision. You don't want to go to church? Don't go to church. If I'm running a business, I set the prices. I hire who I want. It's not some rich person who's an elite in some distant capital that makes the decision for me. No. I make the decision. And I have very little control of others. And they have very little control over me, if any. See, 
What's happening is you have people that want to control every aspect of your life. And if we are going to accept the lie that parents don't have a right to tell a school what their kids can and cannot receive for education, then you've lost your kids. If you can't tell your school, excuse me, you're not teaching my kid that, then you've lost control of your child. You are no longer the parent. You're the parent when they're at home As long as the rest of society thinks it's okay on what you're teaching at home. Because you can't teach that at home and then have that crazy wild kid come to class and say, no, the founding documents are not racist. You can't have that. You're hurting the kid. And you're the parent that wanted to take those books off the shelves anyway. We knew you were a danger. Now you don't want to give your kid a vaccine? Of course not. You're a crazy person. You shouldn't have control of your child at the doctor's office. It's not hyperbole. So what does this have to do with cowboys? Let me ask you the question. If the school out west was teaching things that the parents thought was crazy, would they silently cower or tell their kids, you know what, just go along with it. Don't cause any trouble. Would they? I think they would only if there was some evil capitalist that was trying to take over the town and he controlled all the water and all the griddle, all the grits and all the food, the vittles. He wanted control of the whole county because there was gold underneath everybody's property and so he was taking it and he was stringing up anybody who would speak against him and he was the one that was having that school marm teach those things. That's when people would remain quiet. And it would take a cowboy to come in and say, what is wrong with you people? Stand up. And very few would. So let me ask you, why aren't we standing up now? Is it that we actually believe these things? Or do we just not want trouble because... There is some black Bart out there that will destroy us if we speak up. We are no different than the people in that cowboy town in every single Western movie that we've ever seen that cower, that will kiss the feet of black Bart. Except this time, this time it's not because there isn't a marshal anywhere. Oh, we can't get to the judge and jury. We can't get to the marshal in time. He won't do anything. It's because the marshal is the bad guy. It's because the federal government does know what's going on. They are the bad guy. Which makes Black Bart even more dangerous. And you know what stops Black Bart from having power is when everyone in the town stands up together and they're willing to take the beating. They're willing to get kicked off out of their general store. They're going to have your general store. I'm going to burn it down to the ground. That's fine, Black Bart. I know it's true. I know it's true. And I would much rather be out of a job have my general store burn to the ground, lose everything. I'd much rather do that than lose my word, than to cower and to kiss the ring of a tyrant. When everyone in town is willing to stand up, except for the few cowards that still hide in the barn but come out to celebrate 
once everything is good. When the people in town decide to stand up and just say, nope, that's not right. Nope. Sorry, Terry McAuliffe. That's not true. My children are my children. Period. That's when things change. Question is, are you going to cower or are you going to be a cowboy? The uh, Glenn Beck program tonight, we're going to talk about the out-of-control border. By the way, we have, um, uh, we have a couple of things coming up yet. We have Matt Walsh going to be on the program. We have Tulsi Gabbard on with us. She's going to talk about the, uh, the border as well and what's happening on the border. Uh, and, um, we also have, uh, Paul Merksky, Merks, Merksky. He is, um, he's with the independent community bankers of America right now. They are trying to write in to some of these bills, the ability for the federal government to look into your bank account. If you ever have more than $600 in it. And if you ever spend more than $600, the government and the IRS are notified. They are weaponizing the IRS, and they are going to kill the community bank. And these banks will only get bigger and bigger and bigger, and then they'll be too big to fail again. What are you going to do about it? Well, I would suggest you stand with your community bank. And we're going to talk to uh, Paul about what the community banks are worried about and how you can help them get involved. Coming up. Acted like my dog uh, does. Uno. So again, here is, here's what the guy who wants to be governor of Virginia said about schools and parents last night. You believe school systems should tell children what to do. I believe parents should be in charge of their okay. kids' education. Mr. McCullough, 30 seconds. So first of all, this shows how clueless Glenn Youngkin is. He doesn't understand what the laws were because he's never been involved here in helping Virginia. But it was not. It, the parents had to write to veto bills, veto books, Glenn, not to be knowledge about it, also take them off the shelves. And I'm not going to let parents come into schools and actually you take books out and make their own decision. You vetoed it. So, yeah, I stopped the bill that I don't think parents should be telling schools what they should teach. Wow. Wow. So I've been talking about, you know, cowboy, being a cowboy. And a cowboy is just let your yes be yes, your no be no. That's hard to do in today's world because everybody else changes what they said. For instance, Loudoun County changed a rule uh, because Matt Walsh said, I'm going to come and speak at that school board meeting. And Loudoun County changed the rule so he couldn't and said, no, 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 you, you, uh, you have to, you have to live here. You have to have at least a lease of a house. And you have to present that. So Matt went, uh, went and found a workaround, and he went and got a lease, and he signed a lease on a house so he could speak uh, at the school board. And then they only allowed 60 seconds for people to speak. Here's what he said last night. Listen. I would thank you all for allowing me to speak to you tonight, but you tried not to allow it, yet here I am. Now, you only give us 60 seconds, so let me get to the point. You are all child abusers. You prey upon impressionable children and indoctrinate them into your insane ideological cult, a cult which holds many fanatical views, but none so deranged as the idea that boys are girls and girls are boys. By imposing this vile nonsense on students to the point even of forcing young girls to share locker rooms with boys, you deprive these kids of safety and privacy and something more fundamental, too, which is truth. If education is not grounded in truth, then it is worthless. Worse, it is poison. You are poison. You are predators. I can see why you try to stop us from speaking. You know that your ideas are indefensible. You silence the opposing side because you have no argument. You can only hide under your beds like pathetic little gutless cowards hoping we shut up and go away. But we won't. I promise you that. Thank you for your time, and I'll talk to you again very, very soon. Matt Walsh is here to talk about what uh, he felt last night at the meeting. Hi, Matt. How are you? Hey, Glenn. Doing well. <laughs> so tell me about tell me about last night. 
Yeah, well, we, we had a rally outside the, the building to begin with, and it was just uh, a great turnout, a lot of energy there. And you know, this is happening, of course, not just in Loudoun County. This is happening all across the country. I think, I think parents are waking up to the fact that we cannot, despite what Terry McAuliffe says, uh, we cannot just cede the next generation over to the state and let them decide what values our kids are told, what ideas are going to be in their heads, what kind of people they're going to be. So I think this is a kind of an awakening that's happening. Uh, I do think it's, it's a kind of a larger movement, and that's what we saw yesterday in, in Loudoun County. Um, and it was, you know, I, I thought lining up to go speak, this is supposed to be a public school board meeting for the public, and you hear the word public, and you think, well, the public can, can come and just have their voices heard and at least sit in the room uh, and, and listen to what's being said. But they keep everybody outside. No one's allowed to go inside the building. They even keep most of the media outside. Uh, they, they let a few cameras in, and they make everyone line up outside. You got to pr- provide your proof of residency, show your ID, and they got to take everything out of your pockets. They do like a TSA style screening. So this is already. I mean, if they did this outside of a voting booth, of course we would be hearing the cries of racism, the kingdom mm-hmm. come. Uh, but it's you know so so to talk to speak at a public school board meeting is it has to be more secure than voting in a, in a state. And then you. And they make you wear the mask. And if my voice sounded muffled there, it's because they make you wear the mask. And you line up on it. You know, you, they, they give you little, these little dots you line up on. And you wait for your turn to go before the Royal Highnesses on the school board. And they give you exactly 60 seconds. And at 60 seconds, they cut the mic. And that's all you have. And the irony is that before I came, they accused me of being an outside agitator. And they said, well, we don't want him and outside agitators because we just want to hear from the parents. We want to hear community members. Oh, you want to hear from community members and parents? That's why you give them 60 seconds and you cut the mic? It is, I can tell you, I, you know, I speak for a living. It's very difficult to say anything worthwhile in 60 seconds. And unless oh, you do this for, for a, a living. living you, you, right. You, you, it, it, and the, but people go to speak at school board meetings. These are, these are not trained professional speakers. These are just parents who have questions and have concerns that they want to voice. And I'm just listening to this absurdity of one parent after another getting up there. They can barely get one thought out. And then they're just cut off and sent out of the room. It's. I thought it was. It was disgusting. Honestly, it's, I, I've never seen anything like it. So, what do you think's um, gonna? What do you think's gonna happen? I, I mean, I, I certainly think in Loudoun County, they're gonna. That school board is going to have some problems come come next election day for them. Which Until is when? Then, they, uh, which is coming up in November, I believe. Okay. Um, but they, you know, until then, they've made it pretty clear that they just don't, they don't care what our opinions are, wh- whether we live in Loudoun County or not, because the people in this school board and so many school boards across the country, just as we heard in the clip from Terry McAuliffe, they really just believe that they know better than we do about what our kids should be taught and what values our kids should hold. And so they think that they're, they, they have the moral high ground in silencing parents and saying, shut up and go away. Uh, because we, we know what your kids need. And in Loudoun County, they think that what the kids need, what little girls need, is for boys to be in a locker room with them watching them undress. That's one of the things that Loudoun County thinks kids really need. It's disgusting. So, uh, Matt, is the, is the, what was the crowd like outside? Were there people that um, were, were not, you know, might have been even Biden supporters, uh, you know, and voted for Biden? Or is this... Republican, Democrat, or are you seeing this grow beyond the partisan debate? I mean, I, I, I really haven't. I've been at a few of these school board meetings in, in different states over different issues. You know, in, in Tennessee, it was over the mask issue. And I've talked to a lot of people at these events and uh, outside of the events, too, as I know you, you obviously have. And what I have noticed is, yeah, I mean, there's a very th- – this is at the core – the people that I think are organizing these things and keeping it moving, I think, are tend to be conservative, tend to have those values. Uh, but I've talked to lots of people who are not ideologically right wing at all, but they see what's going on and they are they're disgusted by it and they're terrified the kids are being being subjected to this. And that's the case with with the masking issue. It's also the case with you know, critical race theory and also gender theory, which I think is the even more damaging mm-hmm. theory that's being injected into our schools. Uh, and, and how do you think Terry McAuliffe's words are going to play in the election? I, I hope they play very poorly. I mean, I have to assume that even if you're even if you're on the left and you're a parent and you send your kid to public school, I have to assume that you believe yourself to be a competent person who should have some say in what your own kids are taught. 
I mean, I, I, no matter what you think politically, I can't believe that there are very many parents who say to themselves, who say, oh, no, 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 I don't want to have any say at all. I'm, I'm an idiot. Just, yeah, let the state do it. Uh, I think that, But if I the think state kind of agrees with you or you agree with the state... It's so much easier just to go, yeah, well, I mean, they're not doing anything crazy. Yeah, that's true. It's true if they're, if they're, if they're enforcing what you believe. But, you still, but you're still, you still consider yourself, you, know, you still want the state to align with your values. So you're not I – would, I would have to assume, maybe I'm being too optimistic, that you, that you still wouldn't want to just cede that, surrender that to the state completely. Um, and, uh, but, so I, I would think that that's not going to play well, which is why you could tell when he said it, he made that comment about I, parents shouldn't tell teachers what to teach, and then he quickly moved on. I, and you could tell he, 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 he noticed what he said, and he quickly moved on from there to talking about how teachers are heroes and all this kind of stuff. Um, so I, I don't think it's going to play well. All right, Matt Walsh, thank you so much. Host of the Matt. Wait, wait, wait. Before, before we let Matt go, I have to know how long the lease he signed was for. Do <laughs> You actually did sign a lease for a house, Matt? Yeah, I did sign a lease for a house, and uh, it's it was for a dollar. I got a very competitive pay for a dollar. I splurged a little bit more than I wanted to spend <laughs> for for a woman's basement in the uh, in, in town there. And I, I haven't really decided yet how long I'm gonna. Well, I haven't. I, first of all, I haven't told my family yet that we got to move into a woman's basement. In <laughs> but, we'll all right, Matt Walsh, thank you so much from uh, the Daily Wire. You can also follow him on YouTube, youtubecom slash Matt Walsh. Um, Daily Wire is doing some really great things. I encourage you to become a member of The Blaze, but I also encourage you to become a member of Daily Wire. Um, they have a very, very important uh, set of voices over there. So, Look, he followed the rules. He got he did. He's a resident of Virginia. He, I loved his tweet. Uh, how do you do, fellow Virginians? <laughs> I mean, that's how, you, that's how you introduce yourself to a community. <laughs> All right. Back in just a minute, let me tell you about... Uh, 